on. He's ready to go on the fan. New York Sports Radio. Mike's on. Mike's on. He'll get you the sports any way that he can. It's Mike Francis on the fan. Sports Radio 66 and 101.9 FM. WFAN. From the studios of WFAN, this is Mike Zahn, Francesca on the fan on this Halloween, the 31st day of the month on a Tuesday. So we have said goodbye to October. We welcome in tomorrow, uh, November. Uh, first, a happy Halloween to everybody uh, as we begin the, really, I guess, begin the holiday season. Because as soon as you see Halloween, you get Christmas commercials everywhere. I mean, they, everywhere. I've already seen a couple on TV, so that, that starts already. So the, the run to the end of the year already begins. It begins with Halloween today, and uh, Halloween's a big event if you have kids. You know that. If it, it, you know, that's, that's the thing. You want, once you have kids, you have it as a kid, and then you don't see it again until you have kids. Then Halloween's a big deal. Uh, it is until your kids start to outgrow it, which might are just on the verge of, of doing that, but not yet. Right, right on the verge. But that's where we are today. So drive safely, especially around dark tonight, because there's a lot of kids out there running around. So be careful. Uh, we get ready as everyone heads home tonight for a game six. Verlander tries to uh, complete what has been a brilliant run for him and really cement his career. I mean, you're talking about Hall of Fame stuff for Verlander here. This will make go a long way uh, to put him in the Hall of Fame if he wins this game tonight. This will be one that is remembered for a long time. This is a run that will be remembered for a long time. He's been a one wonderful postseason pitcher anyway so there's right there all of that on the line tonight and really let's be honest if you're the Dodgers you're thinking one thing how do I get him out of the game and get in the bullpen how do I get in their bullpen how do I hit their soft underbelly if you're Houston you're thinking about Verlander taking you as far as possible if you're the Dodgers you're wondering what you can get out of Hill and everybody else because your bullpen which is a strength has be is exhausted it's on fumes so the question is will the offense continue for these teams or will we see the pitchers regain some semblance of control here? And I, I, although this series is a little different than the Yankee series, because there ha was no breakthrough, so the integrity of the home field stood right through the whole series, that's not been the case in this series. So it does make it easier to lose six and win seven. I'd give you Houston a bigger chance than I gave the Yankees. But I still think if Houston's going to win the series, they're going to win it tonight. It'll be tough for them to win Game 7 in that building. Just difficult. It, it, they'd have a better chance than the Yankees had in Game 7, but they would still, uh, it's still a difficult draw. So if you're going to win it, you're going to win it with momentum as you come in and win Game 6. So we'll see what happens as they have the pitching matchup in their favor tonight. The other story, of course, is the 4 o'clock NFL trading deadline. And for the first time in a while, we actually have some trades. And we have one that obviously has a major, major impact for years to come. Uh, and that's if everybody plays it exactly right. And that is the Patriots uh, surprising everybody. And uh, finally, after many times they had the ability to do this, uh, trading Garoppolo to the 49ers for their second-round pick, which in essence is a virtually a first-round pick and is really one of the coveted picks that the Pats love uh, because – if you're into value and into certain things, the picks 33 through 36 especially are considered to be ones in terms of where they are in the draft, but you get the residual value of not being burdened with the expense of the first round, which makes those picks jewels and ones the Pats have always coveted. They can do one or two things. They can draft there or they can dr trade down from there and get multiple picks, which they like to do, and the Pats need to re replenish. Plus, my understanding is they tried to resign Garoppolo. They couldn't do it. Plus, they have salary cap problems. And the other thing that's happened there for them, to take it first from the Patriots' side, is they have come to the realization that Brady has found the fountain of youth. They were wondering if that was the case two years ago, and now they feel he really has. They don't have the resources to sign Garoppolo. They tried to sign him. They couldn't. They know it's just going to get harder as he's a free agent as the year ends. So they have turned down other offers in the past. Their going price a year ago was two number ones, a price that I said at the time, and I still agree, I would pay for him. I think he's worth that. So I think San Francisco got him for a good price for what is really a, a number one, but still a very good price. But the one problem is, He's at the end of this four-year contract now, and he's a free agent. 
let's say you get him in the lineup for the last six games, five games. Are you going to learn enough about him if that's your quest, if you're San Francisco, or are you convinced right now that he's your guy for the future and you're ready to go forward? Because if you're just going to look at him and then decide whether you're going to sign him as a free agent, how are you going to judge him learning a new system in the final six games of the season with your talent? You have no offensive talent. So it's going to be very difficult to look at him from that standpoint. I think you lock him up right now. I think he's a bona fide future franchise quarterback. I have always felt that about him. I've liked him for a long time. I think he's the real deal. Uh, I think they got him at a what is a very reasonable price. They're still going to have a pick at the top of the draft, which they can trade to get multiple picks if they're not in the quarterback market, and they shouldn't be once they make this move. I would just lock him up. Let's see how they handle it. But... From the Pats, it was a standpoint of, A, they tried to sign him. B, they know they can't sign him in a couple of weeks because he's a free agent and he will not resign. And they are not ready to part ways with Tom Brady or even close. Plus, they have salary cap problems and they have real problems in personnel-wise. They need to replenish their team. So they have a lot of work to do, and that's why they made the move they did at the time they did, even though they have tried to hold on to this player. And uh, I don't think even for a second they've lost any you know, uh, interest in him as a player. It's just that I think Brady surprised them that he's been this healthy and been this productive, and he, they couldn't get Garoppolo to sign for a price they could afford. And so they had to finally... You know, bite the bullet and move them, and they move them for the picks they love. They love that pick at the high two, which they think is one of the more valuable picks. Right in that neighborhood is the most valuable picks in terms of value and what you get on the board versus what you have to pay for it in the entire draft. So uh, that's the reason they do. And so the Niners, to me, they release Hoyer, who goes to – he was going to be part of the deal, but the deal – was not favorable to the Pats, so he gets released and he's going to sign with the Pats, or he might have already signed with the Pats for all I know, but he's going to be their backup quarterback, it sounds like. Other trades, the Dolphins uh, traded Jay Ajay. They also were trying to trade uh, uh, other people, including the wide receiver, Landry. They're trying to trade him. They trade him to the Eagles for a fourth-round pick. We told you yesterday the Eagles were going to try and be active. Eagles were looking for a running back, a cornerback, and a uh, tackle. Hard to find the other two. They did find the running back in Jay Ajay uh, to help them as they try to make a run here. Uh, Seahawks traded quarterback uh, Jeremy Lane, uh, a 2018 fifth rounder, and a 2019 second rounder to the Texans for uh, tackle Dwayne Brown. Why they wouldn't want to keep him, I don't know, in, in Houston. But Seahawks really helped themselves offensively with that move. Uh, and was that it or was there one more? Was there one more? No, not yet. Is that it? Is it just those three? Uh, just right? Okay, I thought there was one more. Okay, so that's it. Ajay, uh, Brown goes to the Seahawks, Ajay goes to the Eagles, and Garoppolo goes to the, uh, goes to the Niners. In what I think, listen, I think the Niners are really headed in the right direction. I think Lynch has a really good idea of what he wants to do, and this to me was a very, very astute move. Uh, now, the key is that they're like a zillion dollars under the cap, so they can afford to pay him. I would just get it over with right now and not have him worry about the cost of that in the future. Let's see how they handle it. Do they make him kind of sing for a supper here and say, let me see something from him? It's going to be hard to see something. It's going to take him a long time. It took Matt Ryan a year to learn Shanahan's system. And they don't have any talent around him right now. So, I mean, it's going to be very hard to evaluate him, I would think, when he finally gets, after a couple of weeks, gets whatever week it is that he starts. A lot of people think he might start the Giant game. We'll wait and see. But if Garoppolo and Tom Brady, you could tell, he said, hey, uh, you know, I've become very close to Jimmy and I really care about what happens to him. He's going to have a great career. Tom, so I'm sure, very sure he's not going to have that career in New England. I, I think he's now, Tom's talked about playing until he's 45. I think now he's convinced the Pats he's got a lot left. So they move the kid they thought was the heir apparent and the player they loved. They move him uh, for a uh, second round pick, but in essence, pretty much the first round pick because it's going to be like the 34th pick in the draft if you figure it out right now, most likely 34th, 35th pick at the latest uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the draft. So it's almost the first round pick, and it's a pick, like I said, the Pats have always loved. So that's a move that uh, will change people because a lot of people were thinking of Garoppolo being on the free agent market. 
A lot of people expected him to be a guy they had their eyes on for next year. I know guys who were looking at Garoppolo for next year, figuring the Pats couldn't re-sign him and that he was going to be at the top of their list. So now with him off the board, it changes people's perspective. With the Niners having a very bad year and not being uh, not looking for a quarterback, they will be in trade mode when it comes to the draft because they will probably finish with the number two pick or right around there and behind Cleveland, and they will be in trade mode because they're not going to be dra- unless unless. They turn around and trade Garoppolo, sign him and trade him, or decide to let him walk, which I could not see that they even would think of doing such a thing. So to me, they lock him up, and then they're in trade mode when it comes to, you know, this year's draft. So, but that is a big move for next year and for the future with Garoppolo going to the Pats. I mean, going to the, from the Pats to the Niners and then the other trades. We have two hours left, a couple hours, a lot of rumors. Doesn't mean anything's going to happen. So we got that. We got the series. A big win for the Knicks again last night. I'm trying to get Hornacek on. We might get him on Thursday. We're working on that. Another big game for Porzingis. The Porzingis can lead the league in scoring this year. You just got to worry about the Greek freak who is off to an insane. Start. You look at the numbers on this guy: thirty-five points a game, shooting sixty-eight percent from the floor. I mean, are we kidding? I mean, thirty-five points a game he's averaging right now. Thirty-four-seven, if you want to be exact. But that's outrageous. I mean, that guy's putting up really crazy numbers uh, on the season. So uh, right now, Porzingis is the number three scorer in the league, uh, and off to a great start with a big performance last night against Denver. Really a wonderful performance. They actually chanted MVP when he went to the line late. Might be a little early for that. But again, he looks very, very good. And the Knicks have snapped out of it. Good win last night against Denver, uh, which had beat up on the Nets the night before. So the Knicks playing better. You know, you got to like what you see right now. You know, And really, this week, they're home three games. They can win two of them. I mean, I don't expect them to beat Houston. But then they have Phoenix and Indiana, both winnable games. So Knicks actually got their head above water for a couple of days here. So we got all that to get to. We'll get it all rolling on this Tuesday, right? 